how do you deal with adversities? How do I deal with constant challenges? Okay, so number one is you need to go back and look at yourself. You look at yourself that, okay, it's my ego, it's, my, it's the I, it's the sense of identification that I have developed, that I am someone, I am a person separated from the source, separated from existence. So it's me here, and this is existence. And I'm not one with ex existence. This idea, this illusory idea that you think you're not one with everything. So, because of that, you think you need to control things and things go your way. Well, you are one with the whole thing. Everything is connected to you and you're connected to everything. So you cannot control the oneness because you are the oneness. It's your identification or your idea of being separated from the oneness comes in, which you can call it the ego, and wants to control events to go in your way, to serve your illusory person. This person that does not really exist, it's an idea, it wants to be served by controlling life. And since it's not true, and it's not going to help you evolve to a higher consciousness, existence is not going to abide. It will not go for it. It will kick your ass instead. And then it will put you in the same situation to kick your ass again. Because you don't get it. And then it happens again. And it happens again. And then you start to seek become a seeker. And then, you know, you go to the spiritual market and you're studying this and studying that. And a lot of the teachings are about reinforcing you as a separate person, you can make things happen to go your way. So you're doing these courses, reading these books and practicing these things, and still you can't get what you want. So you're more frustrated. And then maybe if you're lucky at one point, so your ego has been grinded, you know, you keep falling down, you know, your blood gets, your nose gets bloody and you get up and you clean yourself, get yourself ready. You go for another round and you get punched by existence and you fall down again and you get up and, you know, you get yourself ready and you go back for another round and then they, they kick your butt again then it gets to a point that for some of us, if we are lucky, then we hear this teaching. And this teaching is nothing new. It's many different teachers in the past and present time referring to what I'm sharing with you. I'm not the only one who talks about this. But not many people have resonance with it and not many people are ready to hear it because they need to go in that boxing match and get their butt kicked again because the ego is not ready to soften. The ego is not ready to take the back seat. There's still purification. We still have to go through the cycle of getting more purified till we become humble. Because you have to get humble and your ears have to open up so you can hear and your eyes have to open up so you can see and your heart needs to open up so you can receive and give love. But when there's this big ego thing, this sense of separation and I want to control things and I want to manipulate things and I want things to go my way, well, your being, your higher self is not, if you're ready, if you're close, is not going to allow you to go in that direction out of love because 
it doesn't want you to develop this monster ego that it's all me, 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 and everything is for me, and builds up on this illusion. It wants you to realize that you're one with the presence. You're one with the spirit. You're one with God. So you surrender this idea that you're in control into the will of the Allah, in the will of Her Majesty. Surrendering to that. Accepting what is. Accepting life as is. And in accepting life as is, then surrender comes. And in that, you take the back seat. You chill out. You relax. What happens is you go beyond your mind. You learn and you pull your attention from the other world, outside, from your thoughts, from your emotions, that this is wrong. What is happening is wrong. It should go my way. And if it's not going my way, there's something wrong in that existence. So as you begin to see this and notice this, you bring your attention inwards and you bring your attention to yourself, the observer of what is happening not what is happening. What is happening is not going my way. This is wrong. Then now your nervous system is very activated and your thought process is very strong because you have this idea that things need to go your way. And now you're involved with it and you're angry with it. And things just keep getting worse and worse and worse. There's no freedom in it. What we're looking for is freedom. We want to be free. And freedom doesn't mean that I'm going to be problem-free in life and everything's going to go my way. No. Inner freedom means you have come to surrender and acceptance means you're surrendered to life and you're accepting what life presents, what life brings to you and what life takes away from you. And when you lose something, you just stay in your surrender in life, surrendering and accepting that this is meant to be. So now your mind's not activated and your emotions are not up and down. 